Hi everybody, hope everybody's doing great and having a wonderful week getting ready for obviously Mother's Day this weekend. Um, I'm Nicholas Lodge and uh, obviously thank you for joining me on this Facebook page. And um, we're going to be, uh, in this particular uh, Facebook uh, product, I'm going to show you, talk a little bit about um, tappets. And, and FMM products are known for what are called tappets. So tappets are these like bar type of cutters, these strip cutters. And they come in wonderful lettering, lots of different lettering designs. And also, in addition to that, there are lots of other designs. Now, tappets, we have a lot of customers coming to our retail store. A lot of customers obviously order them online. Um, I see a lot of things on different chat rooms where people have a lot of drama with tappets. Uh, the basic thing is with tappets, you have to use gum paste or flower modeling paste or petal paste, something generally you'd use for making flowers. But that also can include modifying sugar paste or rolled fondant to become comparable to a gum paste, petal paste uh, type of material. You can't make these just with straight fondant, okay? I've seen people post where you know you roll out your fondant, you let it dry for 30 minutes, then you use it. It's really just not going to work, all right? The other thing is, is that I use a pasta machine, and generally speaking, you're always gonna use number five on the pasta machine for any tappets. The only exception to that is when you're doing the Old English style ones, which are these very intricate style ones we use for Old English style lettering. When we do the Old English style, I generally use number six thickness for there because they're a little bit finer detailed wise, but all of the general tappets, all of the lettering, all of the other tappets, I generally use number five thickness, all right? But as I said, I will reference this again in a moment, but as I said, so those are just a few basic things. When using uh, paste, um, I use, uh, in most of my classes, Renshaw gum paste. Those of you watching from the UK and Europe, uh, you have obviously, it's called flower modeling paste, and also you have available petal paste. All right, the uh, Renshaw, as I said, gum paste or flower modeling paste is uh, gum tragacanth based. This is uh, great for making flowers, but it's also wonderful for tappets and patchwork cutters. So of course, this comes in white. We also do sell on our website. The gum paste also comes in colors. It comes in pink, in blue, in yellow, in green, and also in red, okay? So I use uh, the colors as well a lot for uh, the tappets. Now, the important thing is here, you want to make sure that you seal this up. And generally, I would then put this into a little zip top type of bag make sure that it's sealed from the air because gum paste, whether you're using a scratch gum paste or commercial gum paste like this, you need to make sure it's not exposed to the air. Now, to condition this, I'm just taking some vegetable shortening, some vegetable fat, white fat. So here in the US, like brands like Crisco, uh, coconut oil can also be used. In the UK, brands like Trex, white floral will be used. It's always a vegetable, never animal. So you're just gonna take just a little bit of vegetable shortening, vegetable fat here, and you're just gonna work this into the gum paste. All right, so this is going to then just soften this down nicely. Now, the Renshaw gum paste is vegan. It doesn't contain any egg whites, so this makes it suitable if you were using, obviously, these tappets. Now, alternatively, you could also make a scratch gum paste. Scratch means homemade gum paste using Tylose powder, all right? So Tylose, which is a form of food grade version of CMC. If you go to nicholaslodge.com and you click on recipes, you will see a recipe for um, my scratch gum paste, my homemade Tylose gum paste. Now that is egg white based, so obviously that is not a vegan product. But uh, when you modify paste, um, so this, for example, uh, this is uh, the uh, bright green Renshaw fondant. So let's say, for example, you're going to be making little frogs or a little, obviously with Florida being our neighboring state, the Florida gators, there's a cute little alligator here in the safari set. You have a little frog, so you're doing the P and the Prince one, you're doing obviously little frogs, you could do obviously things in different colors. But like for graduation, this could be black uh, rolled fondant. Renshaw make an incredible black fondant. So a lot of times it's easier to just modify your rolled fondant. Now on the game, the website on nicholaslodge.com, you will see the recipe, uh, you'll see a re um, recipe link on the recipes for modifying rolled fondant. Now, when I normally do this, I use 115 grams of rolled fondant, that is approximately a quarter of a pound, and to that you would add a quarter of a teaspoon of tylose and a quarter of a teaspoon of vegetable shortening. Now, that is what we call modified fondant, and that would be used, for example, for pressing paste into silicone pearl molds, using for ribbons. When you want to make it comparable to gum paste or flour paste, modeling paste, you generally would double the amount of tylose, all right? But uh, a lot of times, unless you're doing 200 cupcakes, you're not gonna need such a 
large amount. So here I have approximately half that amount. So I've got 60 grams of uh, paste here. I'm going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of tylose powder and a quarter of a teaspoon of vegetable shortening. So what this is going to do, this is going to modify, so a quarter of a teaspoon of tylose powder, okay, and then I'm going to just do, take a quarter of a teaspoon of vegetable shortening, generally just do that by eye, okay, and I'm going to then just add this, and what this is going to do, this is going to convert this sugar paste or rolled fondant into basically uh, gum paste, flour and modeling paste. I've just popped this in a little bag and I've just marked, marked this modified fondant and then gum paste underneath so I know what it is, so any you have left over. Now this takes about 15-20 minutes, all right, so a little earlier on, about 30 minutes ago, and you see how you can see that's a lot firmer. You see how this is really squishy in the bag. You see this has now had about 30 minutes to sit, you see? Because if you try and roll this out straight away, it's going to be just like rolled fondant or sugar paste, all right? So, um, now, so that's the second option, and then as obviously you've got scraps, so you've got, you can use Renshaw flour modeling paste, gum paste, you can use a scratch gum paste, Tylos gum paste, which can be made vegan with aquafaba instead of egg whites, and then you can also modify rolled fondant, 60 grams of rolled fondant with a quarter of a teaspoon of Tylos, a quarter of a teaspoon of vegetable short in a white fat. And that, those are the options of what I would suggest you use. All right, so we've worked a little bit of vegetable shortening out here. We're then going to just roll this out. So you're just going to condition it. That gives life using some little bit of cornstarch, corn flour here. This is in a little uh, cornstarch pouch. I'm going to roll this out. And generally when I roll this out, I would roll it out into a sort of almost like into a square. Of course, depending on how many you're doing of different designs, because we're going to cut this into strips. Okay. So you just roll this out into a square rectangle. And then we're going to feed this through the pasta machine. It's going to go through the pasta machine on number five. So I have my pasta machine here is set on number five thickness. So I'm just going to go through the pasta machine here. And this is going to be the thickness. Now remember, this is the thickness we use for all tappets. The only exception to that is if you are doing Old English style. And this Old English style is obviously also very nice for graduation cakes as well. Now, when we use tappets, all right, basically the rule of thumb is, is you want to just cut out one letter at a time. So generally what you're going to do is you're going to cut a strip of paste about the width of the cutter, okay? So you can use, for that, you could use like a little mini palette knife, or a lot of times I would just use. And so what you do here is just going to make this just a little bit wider than the strip, all right? Because the idea is when we cut this, we will cut it like this, you see? So, and then this means you're not sort of having too much paste out at one time. You could use a ruler. You can also use like a multi-ribbon cutter, which is another FMM product. So you see how you have your, you have your strips like this. Now I'm going to use here, uh, this is a plastic flap. Uh, this is a uh, flap I use for flour making. So this is great because you've got uh, in here, you can put your paste. And so you put your strips in here, so you can cut out multiple strips here. There's actually two pieces of plastic in here, um, and this is called the multi-flap, and I use this for flour making. But this means you're not sort of exposing too much paste at one time, okay? And a lot of times I would just sort of put some, the paste here, because remember, gum paste or flour paste dries fairly quickly. Now, when you're doing basic letters like this, all right, um, we're going to use the letter cutter. All right, so like for example, if you were going to cut out, I'm going to show you here a C. So you see how when you cut this out, what it means is you're only cutting out one letter at a time. The reason is if we just had that big square of paste, you try and cut out, it means you're going to have paste stuck in the B and the D, and you spend half your time trying to get rid of that paste. Now, I'm using here, this is a textured mat, or as I said, you can use like a textured chopping board, something like that to work on, because what this means is then the paste will move freely uh, when we cut this out the paste will move freely onto there. And uh, so see, if you're gonna cut out, like for example, a letter C, all you do here is you put the paste on the top, you go around in a circular movement, all right? And then as I said, what you do is you just whack it, whack it on the table there, and the letter will come out there like so, all right? So these are, as I said, called the, called the whackets. Now, um, when you're doing something like, say, a letter A here, all right, which is, as I said, a more, um, as I said, intricate design, it's got the, obviously the inside part. If you're doing like, say, a letter A, whatever, you're just going to cut this out. So what you're going to do is you're going to use either a, 
a needle or an acupuncture needle, you're going to remove that inside part first and then just going to whack that out. And usually these are flying all over the place, but they would just come out very, very easily. All right, and the, the letters will come out like this, all right? Pixelated, so these are great for like Minecraft cakes. So you see here the A, B, and C here. This is the pixelated one. But this is really fun for cookies, for cupcakes, and things like that. Now, when you're working with some of the more intricate designs, what I normally do is I use either a little bit of vegetable shortening, all right? Now, if you're using vegetable shortening or, for example, coconut oil, what you need to do is make sure when you finish your cutter, with your cutter, you take a little bit of dish soap and you're going to give it a good scrub and just some warm soapy water just to remove any remnants of the vegetable shortening off the cutter. If you don't, what will happen is that will basically dry like a yellow wax, okay? So just make sure you clean them afterwards. Now, another option would be to use, um, in my Easy line, I have two products which are called uh, easy release. So these come in, uh, this is part of my NL Easy line. So this is the easy release pot, this is the easy release stick. It's the same product, we just have it in two different various uh, uh, vessels. So when we use this product, all right, what this is, this is actually an organic product. So it's actually made with organic coconut oil, um, organic beeswax, and organic lemon oil. And uh, so it is a sort of an organic product. So literally what you do here, just touch your finger onto that. So just literally just touch your finger. And then what you would then do is if you were doing the lettuce here, you're just gonna just put, just rub over with your finger. I'm just gonna show you actually doing a whole A, B, and C. All right, now this is the same Thickness, this is the, this is the uh, modified fondant, all right? So I've rolled this out. You can also put just a little touch of cornstarch down. You really want to make sure that your paste is moving freely. So see, this is called easy release. Now, if you're using the stick, what you do there is you just literally just hold your finger on the top of the stick and you just rub a little tiny bit of that onto the cutters, okay? Now, so you see here, I'm going to actually show you doing like a couple of letters at a time. So if you were doing, so you take your letters like this, you press down, going to go around in a circular movement like this. Again, so this is the pixelated one. And you see here, what I'm going to do is then I'm going to use my straight pin and I will just remove the inside part. Now, the reason why I do this here is if you whack this out, then try and take out that inside part. You're going to damage it. All right. And then you see you just whack that on the table and you see how your letters come out beautifully here. All right, so you see how this would give you the pixelated, like A, B, and C. Of course, you could do individual letters there. And normally what I do is I use like a piece of fun foam. So a lot of times when I'm using the letters, I would just pop them onto some fun foam like this. And then I just uh, make sure that the letters are, you know, because sometimes with especially open letters like a C or whatever, they might, um, of course, uh, need to just be reshapen. And then normally I just put them on there and just let them dry for a few minutes on the fun foam. And then you can either use them straight away to attach to a cake um, with a little bit of edible glue, or you can let them dry totally. So if you were doing, say, 200 cookies, you could cut out all your letters. A couple of days later, you could stick them on. And then generally, if you are sticking the letters on when they're totally dry, I would normally just use a little tiny bit of piping gel um, on the back of the letters uh, because piping gel will stick dry to dry. So if you have, say, like a dry cookie, royal icing cookie or fondant cookie, and a dry letter, edible glue won't stick uh, dry to dry. But edible glue is suitable if your letters have just been made a few minutes and they're still a little bit softer, okay? So that's how you would use that. And then when you go on to, say, like the Old English style, okay, so the Old English style here, so remember, this is number six, so you see, the more intricate designs, you will always use your little bit of uh, vegetable shortening or your easy release on here, you see, because that makes a huge, huge difference. And um, when you do the letters, all right, so you're just going to put just a little bit of that, whatever letter you're doing. And a lot of times when I'm just cutting out, say, a couple of letters, you see, I would just have a strip. Um, so you don't want to work with too much paste at a time because the gum paste, the flour paste will dry fairly quickly. So again, when you're using the letters, um, here, I'm going to do a letter C. Now, the letter C is fairly basic, all right? So once you've removed the inside part of that. Now, something else you can use for these, this is an acupuncture needle. Um, this is what I use for air bubbles in fondant. These work great. But you see, this is a more basic letter. So you see that will come out nicely out of there. Now, another little tip I will share with you. If you were going to paint these gold, you would start off with yellow, all right? If you're going to do things in silver, you want to start off with gray. So what I do there is I would just tint my 
gum paste with a little bit of the rainbow dust gray pro gel so you make a gray color because then when you paint silver on top or you're painting gold on top of yellow um, you're going to get more depth of color but also if you have a little areas you don't paint it's not going to notice now if you were doing some of the other letters um, for example like say the letter a there which is a little bit more intricate now this also applies to some of the you see how this is a much more intricate design here so here you're going to then just remove those inside pieces there all right now on some of these larger letters and some of the more intricate letters what i would typically do there is i would just use this pin and i just flick with a pin so you're just going to come in there with a pin here like so i'm just going to pop that out like that and it will come out of course on something like say you can see the five and a zero there's fairly intricate i just use the straight pin a little pin or a needle to get those out of the mold okay um, so those, those are sort of using, as I said, some letters. So there's some really, really super letter designs in there. So remember, this is the only one, the old English style, number six, all right, on your pasta machine. Everything else is number five, okay? So those are some of the lettering choices. And I'm just going to just uh, talk a little bit about some of the other ones because there's some really, really fun designs here. Then we have, you know, this is a one sort of it's fun uh, to use. This is the one that we've used for... Uh, so you can turn, make these into, let's bring these over here so you can sort of see that. But you can see how you've got almost like a sort of a castle here. And then this one here is the, the um, horse, which actually comes, there is a coach that goes with that. So you could do like Cinderella's coach and horses, but you can also turn that into a unicorn. So if you just make a little piece of paste on there and do it gold. And that was actually painted using the uh, click and twist brushes. These are the rainbow dust click twist brushes. So these are wonderful for just using for like gold detail on things. So you see you could use this for like the unicorn for his little uh, horn and that for when you're doing the castle. So these work wonderful. You can also, these are totally edible as well because one thing I will mention if you're using these on cupcakes or on cookies, you want to make sure you're using totally edible. And this is like also the paint pots, all right? So these are great because you just use those with a paintbrush and you just take the um, silver or gold with a paintbrush, they're water soluble. Um, so you just use those um, and of course paint the water and can or whatever. And then when you're doing something like say uh, Cinderella's dress here, this would also be really cute for like Quinceanera. You could do this in hot pink or whatever color the theme was for the Quinceanera party. You could do this as a wedding dress. Of course, you could embellish this with piping, with royal icing. But just to show you how you would do sort of like a two-tone effect, that would be you take your first part here, all right? Now again, this is more basic, all right? When I do something like the castle, which is more intricate, all right, I would use the, um, I'd use there the uh, little bit of vegetable shortening onto the edge here. And I also want to talk here a little bit about using uh, ones with designs on, because you can see here, this is, um, this particular set here, this set has got uh, different designs on, on this one. And uh, so this, this one has got your uh, decorative designs on here. So this has got some really fun things. Now you see some of these are very open. So like, for example, I'm just going to show you this first, and then I'll show you how I did the Cinderella's dress. But see, like this one here is very basic, very open. So you just would make a strip. And you see here, you then would just take this cutter, all right? You press, so you see that's the width of the paste. Press down, go around in a circular movement, just whack that down like this. Of course, you can also brush pearl dust onto these. And you see these could be used on a cake, like here. I've got a little party cake here. All right, so you can see here I've used these on this party cake. So all I would do is just cut out, say, 12 of those. I would then just turn them upside down. So I would take my little pieces like that. You just would turn those upside down. So you put them onto a napkin. So you just cut these out. And then what you do is if you wanted to put some pearl dust onto them, put them onto here. Then you would take a little bit of pearl dust you can use a pump brush, you could just use, this is like a white sparkle dust. So see, you could just brush this onto the top of these as soon as you've made them, or you can let them dry for a few minutes. But if you're going to put these onto, say, the surface of a cake, because the round, if you're thinking of a round cake, you want to put these on while they're still sort of semi-soft. And then what we do there is you're just going to turn these over. So you're just going to turn them over onto your napkin here. 
And then I would use some edible glue. Um, this is uh, my Nicholas Lodge Easy Glue. And uh, this is a shelf stable glue, so you don't have to refrigerate. This is an edible glue. And I use this for the letters and things as well. And this is a little glue roller. So this is the Easy Glue Roller. So you just pop the top off of this, fill this with your glue. And you see then you have a little glue roller. So you're just going to put a little bit of glue onto there. This makes it very convenient. Little tip I'll share with you. This is a little bit like a roll-on deodorant. If you don't use it for a while, the ball is going to get sort of feel like it's stuck. Just run it under some hot water or in a wet towel, and that will just make it roll freely. And you see then you just would take that, and you then would just lift this up here. And of course, then you just would attach that to your cake. So you just press that onto your rolled fondant wherever you want that to go. And so those are cutting out, as I said, some of the little pieces. But on that, um, on, on the ones that have got designs on them, okay, so for example, like on here, you can see that, like for example, like this one here has got like lines on it. This one is actually a Celtic design here. Um, so if you're doing like an Irish wedding cake or cupcakes or whatever, this is like a Celtic design. So if you're doing any of the designs that have detail on them like for example when you do like the children here on the um, on the communion if you're doing the giraffe so you get the little spots on the alligator here how we do that is you just take your um, you take your whatever design you're doing you press it down all right go like that before you pop that out you're just going to use a cosmetic sponge so with your cosmetic sponge you're just going to press this on to so you see that's going to give you the design so when you pop that out you see how what that's going to do, that's going to give you design onto there, see? Um, and so that would be the same, you know, if you're doing, let's say, for example, like the, I'll show you here, the Bible here. So you see, if you're doing like a Bible course, you could do this in burgundy or red or whatever color. So to go around, again, you're just going to press this on. So you're going to get your design onto there, like so. And then when you whack that out, will come out of the mold here like that, all right? Now, you see how that's stuck a little bit? So that really means that if you're, if you're gonna do that, that's where you would use a little bit of your easy release, because that makes a huge, huge difference. The other thing is when you're doing designs that you have, that uh, when you remove them, if you need to remove, make sure you remove the excess paste here. But see, so if you just take the, but see, I'm just gonna show you the difference. With using the vegetable shortening of the easy release on there, it's going to make it a lot, lot easier to take this out. You see, so when you take that out, you see how it just flew out of the cutter, and you see how there you have your, like your Bible, you see? But you see how pressing it in with the cosmetic sponge, what that does, that embosses the design onto there. But you see, so this would be like when you're doing, say, the castle here, you see? So again, that would be done very much the same way. You'd use your vegetable shortening or your easy release around the outside, rub over the surface, press that on and then press that. So when you pop that out, you're actually going to get all the windows, little heart windows in there as well. So you'll have all the fine detail. So when you're doing something like, say, the Cinderella, which is like a two-tone effect, you see, so first of all, you would do your white part like this. So you can press this on if you want to, all right? So if you're going to do this just as a dress, like in blue, you could basically just press this on just gently like that. And then when you whack that out, you're going to get the design onto there. And then what you would do is you could go in there and do a little bit of embellishment. So I'm going to use my, um, this is my little companion tool. So you can do some little triple dots here. So like little Swiss dot type of design. Okay. And then you can take a uh, tracing wheel. This is a PME product. So with your tracing wheel, you can use, do like little stitches onto here. And I'm just going to do like a little stitch across the, the bottom here. And then see, you're, what you're actually going to do here is then I'm going to put this onto your little pad. I'm going to take a Dresden tool. So I'm actually going to do like a little ruffle. So just like I would when I make sugar flowers, like on say a peony petal, I'm going to just use my Dresden tool here. And I'm just going to just frill along the edge here like that. So you see how it's going to make your little frills and you just go along with your Dresden tool. And I'm also going to just frill the sleeves as well. Okay, so that's going to give you this part. And you see what you then can do is you just roll out a contrast color. So this is actually the Renshaw blue. And so see then what I'm going to do now is going to just here. I would make sure I put a little bit of easy release onto here. And you see what I'm going to do now is going to just going to do this, turn this over. And then here, I actually want to make sure I press that onto there. Gonna just whack that out here. 
And then you see what I'll do is I'll then use my cutting wheel. So I'll then actually just use my cutting wheel. I'm going to cut into here like this, all right? So I'm actually just going to cut in with this. So you see this is going to give the sort of the over, and then I'm going to cut off the sleeves because obviously we've already got the white sleeves here. Okay. And of course you could use, um, you could use do texture on here. And again, you would then just take a little bit of the pearl. So it's going to take just a little bit of the pearl. It's just giving you sort of some ideas of how to, to use those. We're going to just put some pearl onto here like this. And you see then what I would do is take my edible glue. I'm just going to turn this over. I'm just going to use my edible glue now, my roller. I'm just going to put this on. Now lift this up and you see this will then give you your sort of overlay on top of your so you get your little sort of like party dress. So of course you could do this like with if you think of like Beauty and the Beast you could do this as Belle's dress in yellow but you know for little girls parties and things like that it's just a really nice way to and you can just put some sparkle dust onto there of course you could paint the little heart in different colors and uh, you can see here You've got this one is done with Super Pearl, so you get some sort of ideas about how to to uh, to use those. And um, with the rainbow dust pens, you know those are great. So when you're doing like the so here, obviously unicorns are still fairly popular, um, not as popular as they were, but unicorns are still very popular. Again, I've just used the rainbow dust pens, the yellow with the wider tip there, and then the black one. So that gives you some ideas there. So those are um, some, uh, as I said, some um, ideas of using the, uh, the patch, the uh, FMM cutters, so you can see for lettering. So especially those of you that struggle with freehand calligraphy, this just gives you an alternative uh, to using other, other methods of embossing the design onto your cake to use your cutters. But especially for, as I said, this time of year with Father's Day for cupcakes and cookies, Mother's Day, graduations, things like that. Um, the Tappet range is a set of very useful, as I said, addition to your, to your equipment. We look forward to seeing you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Happy retail therapy. Okay.